There are tons of videos online of people getting chased by bears. A lot of them are real, but some of them are fake. That would be some triple A tier quality work. This is 100% real. That's, no, there's, cause. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of VFX Artist Debunk. That's right, that's our new show name. I like it. I, I just decided right now, that's probably not our show name. I don't know. Welcome back to the Bunkin' Brothers. <laughs> Bunkin' Brothers! <laughs> okay, listen, so I saw something on Reddit that made me do a quadruple take. Mm. I'm not sure if it's real or fake. I'm seeing a lot of buzz about this, and a lot of the comments are like, oh, that's definitely fake. If I look at the pixels, I can tell. I'll look at the pixels. <laughs> you and can I'll tell because the way it tell. is. <laughs> First off, let's just go ahead and watch it. Yeah, fair. Cause it's a sweet drone shot flying up and over the trees. Like that's a shot that I'd be pretty happy with. Look at this dude flying by. Uh, and the bear. Wait, hold on a sec. What I love about this is that, dude, that double take from the bear. This is 100% real. That's, no, there's, cause <laughs> that would be some triple A tier quality work for a random video on Reddit. I don't know <laughs> what, if this is like a resume for someone in the visual effects industry, but hit us up because we're impressed. <laughs> That's insane. That's so good. Let's say this bear is a CGI bear. It's visual effects. What is the thing that stands out to you as the most challenging thing that this video does flawlessly? Here's the trickiest thing in my opinion. This is the very first thing I looked for when I saw the shot, and that is the bear's shadow against the other shadows on the ground. Yeah, that exact thing. So you have real snow. Snow acts a lot like alabaster or marble or milk or candles. It's a medium where the light goes through it and scatters. They're almost like volumetric shadows, like shadows in fog. So shadows take on this like depth to them. They have this fuzziness around the edges and the light propagates the snow in certain ways. And then if you're going to project another shadow on top of that, well, you need to cut out those other shadows so that your shadows don't double up because that's not how shadows work. If you look, the bear's shadow is not on top of the tree shadows, it's the same light being obscured that the trees are obscuring. So that's the thing that would be effectively impossible to do unless they actually had the entire ground BCG. Notice how the shadow actually deforms over yeah. the terrain of the snow. Perfectly mm -hmm. too. Perfectly, Perfectly yeah. while also then combining with the existing shadows flawlessly. There's no like sort of blend mark, which is an artifact that you can tend to get when you try to do that sort of proper blending. It's that more than anything else that convinces me this is yeah. real. I will say watching this, the plausibility around just why this clip exists like checks all my boxes. Like I think this is pretty clearly like on their farm of some sort. I don't think the guy's running for his life from the bear. The guy does not look freaked out. It feels like it was a, a clip that was produced to be funny. It feels set up in that way, but certainly not in a way that like the bear is CG because there's so many different elements here. The shadows are perfect. The footprints in the snow. You're talking fur simulation. You're talking snow kick up particle simulation. Even the way the bear looks back as the drone flies by naturally like something would if something like you're talking head. perfect like, animation. Perfect, yeah. perfect animation. Perfect animation. The way it stops and it reacts to the ground. Like one of the problems with physics systems and visual effects is that it's hard to get them to feed back into each other because at a certain point you're in a feedback loop. It's one of the issues they had with King Kong when he's on the boat. Is when King Kong moves, that would cause the boat to rock, which would cause King Kong as a creature to adjust their balance, which would cause the boat to rock, which would cause them to adjust their balance. And when you throw that into a computer, it goes and it dies <laughs> <laughs> because it just feedback loops. So at a certain point, the artists were like, we will animate the boat and then you guys can drive the animation of King Kong based on that. And sure, do physics for the hair. There are to some degree like ways to get these things to interact and feedback to each other and interact with each other on a simulation level. But yeah, when we're talking about animation, that's a whole different ballpark where that feedback loop would break it. I'm almost thinking looking at this, it would be simpler to just make the entire environment and bear see so that everything works in tandem, but now all of a sudden. Yeah, don't worry about Sam. He's looking for Project Loon. I need to figure out the secrets of Project Loon. <laughs> Still on the hunt. But yeah, it's, it's almost to the point where the entire environment would benefit from being CG, but then you have the guy that ruins that too. So all these things together, it's just, if you're talking the effort put in to make this real, which I don't even think is possible, versus the reward of one post on Reddit, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this requires making your own software level of like yeah. realism. This is like, I'm going to write my own program from scratch mm -hmm. to do this. All right, wait, hold on. Before we 
we move on, didn't somebody reach out and follow up with us on Project Loon? Yeah. With like an actual yes. flight path? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. We have a video on crew cuts on quarterdigital.com where we go into the after story of that. If you wanted to know more about the UFO video, go check it out. Quarterdigital.com, our crew cuts show. So I decided to look into this a little bit more and there's a bit of a rabbit hole here. There's no information about this clip and the information that people were able to find was disappearing from the internet rapidly. There's a FPV pilot that did share this video with the hashtag Mavic and hashtag DJV. Now I at first thought DJV was a typo trying to say DJI. You know, they make drones. But DJV is apparently a visual effects review software. Hashtag DJV doesn't automatically mean they're talking about an obscure visual effects review software, AKA a video viewer with commenting abilities. Like it could be a million things. There's a Snopes episode that's written about this that claims that this is VFX. In other words, all of this pointed to the idea that the video showed a clever mix of CGI bear with a background video shot by a drone. Wrong, they're yeah. wrong. I'm inclined to agree because because this seems more like a trained bear in my mind. It's a trained bear, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. it is. In my personal opinion, this is definitely a real shot. Yeah. There's zero evidence in this. Not a single shred of pixels that point to this being visual effects. Yeah, every piece of evidence sits firmly on the other side of that argument. Part of the mission of a lot of our videos is to help kind of educate the general audience about how visual effects are done and how to not have this mindset. Exhibit A. This isn't no crazy Hollywood level expensive deal. CGI isn't as hard as people think nowadays. I work in video and could have my post-production team replicate this in maybe three hours on an old laptop. Stop. <laughs> oh man, just a few hours. Three That's hours it. on an old laptop. Yeah. Psh, drone pilot slash videographer here. You wouldn't get that kind of clear audio off an FPV <laughs> drone like this. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. I've actually been very surprised by how often I've seen the sound comments like, oh, they replaced the audio, therefore this video is fake. Mm -hmm. That's step one in every visual effects shot. Yeah. <laughs> step one is always to replace the audio when doing visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing we do. It is very common practice to replace the audio from a drone because it just sounds like Burr. And so it's also very common to have people sound design the shots. Little sound elements like going by a creek, you hear the water, the whooshes going over trees, or a dude going <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, video clips don't just upload themselves to the internet. Somebody consciously produced and delivered this clip online, which, you know, if it the whole time, it's like, no. The comment that really, really caught me here. Video is way too low res to make out the graphic details, but CGI is good enough at a consumer level nowadays to fake this. Easily. Easily. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe he knows what he's talking about. Let me read his next sentence here. Rotoscope in the path with a realistic model Add shaders and textures. Easy. <laughs> That's it. You just put a static model there and then throw textures and shaders at oh, it. Don't forget it's to a rotoscope oh, the path. You have to rotoscope the path. I think that means something. Yeah, it means, you know, cut out the path for some reason. And then, you know, the rest is easy. This is a classic example of someone who thinks they know what they're talking about because they know a few buzzwords. It's always important to remind people of the Dunning-Kruger effect. When you learn a little bit about something, you suddenly think that you're an expert in something. In other words, you have not yet learned how much you don't know. You've just learned a little bit of stuff that now you do know. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, walk of life. It happens to me as well. I feel like I start knowing something, but the key is to get to the point where you start realizing how little you know, you know? For comparison's sake, there are tons of videos online of people getting chased by bears. A lot of them are real, but some of them are fake. And I kind of wanted to take a look at them to kind of show you what we mean and some of the senses that are tingling when we look at an actual fake bear chase. Hey guys, it's me Jake here out in the woods because today I'm going to be filming my first viral bear chase hit. Now, I would use visual effects, but I don't really know how to do visual effects. So I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way where a bear actually chases me. I know it sounds kind of dangerous, but I've got everything covered. Courtesy of today's sponsor, Vessi, I'm gonna be wearing a pair of Vessi sneakers and that's gonna get me out of this alive, okay? And there they are. Oh wait, oh, oh no. Uh, well. Okay, it looks like I forgot them back at the house. Let me run up there and do... Is that a bear right there? Oh God, I was just kidding. I, I'm not actually gonna do a bear chase video. I was, there's no, there's actually a bear down here. I, I was not prepared for this at all. Jake, Jake, it is I, the bear, here to tell you about today's sponsor, Bessie. That's right, keep running. 
Vessies are comfortable, stylish sneakers you can wear every day. I know you like boots. Not anymore. You like Vessies. That's because Vessies are made from an incredible patented Dymatex material, which will keep your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And they have antimicrobial insoles that keep your feet fresh while cloud like cushioning keeps things comfy. Oh God! Oh God! I wish I had Vessies on. I just lost a shoe. Did you know that Vessies are 100% waterproof and snowproof? Vessies will have your feet dry in fall and winter's unpredictable weather. The thing that I like most about Vessies is that they're sustainably made and vegan. Not only do they use less material waste and less water waste, they're not made from any animal byproducts. That's right. Good for me, good for you, good for bears. Now you might want to harvest my pelt for a great winter coat, but I can assure you humans have developed some very competitive technologies that will keep your feet and your body feeling comfortable, lightweight, and breathable all the time. No more need to go out and harvest bear pelts. All you need is to get a pair of Vessies. Remember that Vessies are a great investment to wear all year long for all different types of activities and weather conditions. Had you been wearing them here, I probably wouldn't even be chasing you. Okay, guys, guys, oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay, I found a little fort right here. I'm gonna hide in it. I think the bear still has my scent, but I should be out of here alive in just a little bit. I'll let you guys know. Um, in the meantime, uh, if you guys are interested in getting a pair of Vessies for yourself, just click the link in the description below and you'll get $25 off each pair of adult Vessie shoes. That's $25 off each pair of adult Vessie shoes by going to Vessie.com slash corridor crew. Oh God. Oh no, he's coming, he's coming back. Ah. Ah. Yeah, okay. that, that's the event. You can tell, yeah. <laughs> Where'd it go? Is there more of it? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. Is the leaf not rotoscoped? Is the leaf in the foreground behind the bear in the background? Ooh, it was like a little yeah, bit like right. above the his branches back. above him. It would have been actually pretty convincing. The motion tracking was good. You know, the stock footage that he grabbed was decent. He really just needed to work the colors as opposed to just letting it just be the raw footage. The color bothers me less than the luminance. Intrinsically, you kind of just get a sense that the black levels aren't right. Yeah, just it's the darkest thing in the entire frame. Yeah, yeah, by far. So even though we only see it for a split second, it just subconsciously feels like it shouldn't be there. And it's the shadow, again, is the giveaway, right? Like, look at that thing. Yeah. The thing is dense. Motion blur was the big one for me. He whips back and then whips back forward again so quickly that you wouldn't be able to actually see the bear. There is motion blur, but there's just like one frame where there's zero motion blur at all, and it sticks out. Even though we only see it for a 30th of a, of a second, I wonder if he specifically turned on a sharp frame just so like we have that like moment of seeing a bear. I, I think the reason there's a single frame that's sharp there is because the motion blur that's happening here is a two-dimensional translation motion blur. And here we have rotational motion blur, we have jelly and skew happening from within the sensor itself from the rolling shutter, we have compression artifacts, and like you can't get that complexity of motion with your basic two-dimensional After Effects motion blur. You're just gonna get basic, you know, uniform smears of the object and that's it. I'm not trying to dunk on this person and their VFX. The motion tracking is great and the idea is really funny, and honestly the cinematography is kind of cool too. We're just trying to point out what you would actually need to look at to make these effects look real in reference to the very first video that we all think is real. Let's look at the best bear effects in Hollywood and see if those are at least on par with the drum bear or if the drum bear is even better than the best that's ever come out of Hollywood. So let's check out the bear attack from The Revenant. I know we've looked at this shot before on VFX Artists React, but in this context, I think it's worth revisiting. Oh my God, and the plants? I forget about the plant interaction. So the very first thing that stands out to me is while it's well animated, it does feel like it's animated. It feels like somebody's gone in there and they're kind of working with motion capture of a person and they're just an incredibly talented animator, but it still does not quite have like that chaotic natural randomness and weight shifting and detail that just real life has. It's really close though. I mean, it's close enough that when I watched the movie for the first time, I didn't really second guess that this was a real bear, you know? Like, while yeah, I was watching the movie, I was in it. it. Yeah, I right. believed this was a real bear when I watched the movie. That looks great it's right there. fantastic work. And the, the wet fur is just like with all like the granular chunks and friggin' yeah. Yeah. Like, the, bits the, in it. The matted really wetness. Well done. And to be clear, this scene, there's so much more going on than just a CG bear. The fact that like Leo DiCaprio is interacting with the bear, like there's a lot that has to be planned ahead of time, executed at an expert 
separate level, and then all of the rendering and compositing, all the simulations and whatnot, all executing at such a high level to get what we're seeing here. And you know, if the team that did this bear did a bear in a drone shot, the bear would probably look as good as that bear in the drone shot, but it still has to go through the process of compositing, and that's still just you're limited by physics to a certain degree with compositing. And that's where it doesn't matter how good your CG is. The shadows ain't gonna paint out themselves. <laughs> you gotta still do that handwork. Basically what we're learning here is that the drone bear guy is way better than this entire production. <laughs> On an old laptop in a few hours. So that's, I mean, <laughs> With only Da Vinci better. and After Effects. <laughs> There's another video I want to take a look at of this woman snowboarding down a mountain with a bear chasing after her, and she's far too casual. Oh, Let's see. There's oh, the it's bear. The fake. There's the bear. Fake. It was fake from the get go. <laughs> I can just tell. It's definitely a commercial. And for since headphones. she's listening yeah. to music, she can't hear the bear chasing after her and going. Arr, arr, arr. I think you might. Be, maybe it is a commercial for headphones. Commercial you might be right. They're displayed beautifully. When I first saw this video, I was like, oh, that's scary. <laughs> 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 this is a great example of what compositing a bear in behind you, actual footage of a bear, would actually look like. Yeah, it's nice because you can only really take the compositing element so far, and they did a really nice job from what I'm seeing here. But, you know, there are obvious elements that are not real. One of the first things that stands out to me, see right there, the difference between those few frames? You see how there's like an adjustment in the entire environment. It like goes muddier almost, like lowers in contrast for whatever reason, but the bear stays perfectly the same. The other big thing that stands out to me is at the end of the day, when you use footage, you're stuck with the lighting of that footage. The lighting here in this scene is not top-down lighting. The ground and the sky are the same brightness. It's wraparound lighting. If you look at her jacket, the bright spots aren't the top of the jacket, it's the sides of the jacket where it's reflecting the yeah. brightness of the snow. So the bear shouldn't be bright on the top and dark on the bottom, it should be bright on the sides and dark in the center. But you know, all in all, for having to cut out bear footage from an entirely different source, color grade it, try to match like the fogginess of the scene, have snow popping up over the feet, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, directed by. There it is. Produced by the Woolshed Company. Well, maybe it's not for the headphones, but if this was an ad, maybe it's they're trying to pretend it's an ad, like showing we can make viral videos. Did you see the website? It said .com slash virals. Yeah. Half a billion unpaid views and counting. We trick people into watching your advertisements. Oh, they did the rolling in the tire one. Oh, wait. They did that lightning one, too? Huh. Oh, they did that one, too? Dang. And that one? <laughs> okay, these guys are legit. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice, legit. And we were like, oh, a billion unpaid views. Oh yeah, I have seen all that, okay. <laughs> While many of the videos you watch probably don't have visual effects in them to do a trick on you, many of the videos you watch are staged. Something doesn't have to use VFX to be fake. Staged, I guess, is a form of faking it. Although I will say, for how often stuff just gets taken at face value on the internet, I mean, just look at any of the reposts of Boss Town Dynamics, it's nice to have people taking something like this and being like, wait a minute, maybe it's not real. Skepticism is nice to see. I do like seeing that we're getting some skepticism here. And you know what, let's be real. Part of the reason these people are probably breaking it down as CGI is because they probably watch the show and watch us break things down <laughs> as CGI. So we're partially to blame here, in a good way. At least people are learning about visual effects. But just a reminder, it's still very, very hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, all I gotta say is, if you want more of this, go to Captain Disillusion. He has a way better take on it. <laughs> <laughs> he makes incredible stuff. If you like debunking, if you like skepticism, if you wanna learn more, check out his channel. So Christian apparently set up an email, debunk at quarter digital. If you have a video, aliens, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, and preferably, the actual files, the raw files, not in this compressed, like, oh, I got recorded off the screen of my phone stuff. But seriously, if you have something you want us to take a look at, debunk at quarterdigital.com. Thanks to all the spam on YouTube comments now, we had to like ban links in the comments. So if you recommend a video through comments, you're not gonna see it, sorry. <laughs> Nick was saying that like, we already have a bunch of great UFO footage, so you know what that means. Subscribe for more bunkathons. This is exciting, I love this. I, oh, want man. To, I, I legitimately <laughs> want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. <laughs> And I want to see a UFO. You want to believe? I want to believe. I want an unexplainable video. Yeah. You want to barely leave? Oh. <laughs>